Hello YouTube and welcome back into another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Elden Ring and we're going to be doing the top 10 best quality great swords. It's going to be just like my one that I did for straight swords. We're going to be going through the 10 great swords that you can use in this game that don't require any arcane, faith, or intelligence. So just for people who want to use strength and dexterity, these are the swords for you. So I'm going to be ranking them from 10 to 1, 10 being the worst, 1 being the best, and I'll be showing you where to get them as exact as possible whenever possible. So we're going to be starting off right away with number 10, the Lord Sorn's Great Sword. You can see I'm wielding right here pretty standard looking weapon actually looks pretty realistic i kind of like this one it's got a pretty solid design to it uh and is pretty cool looking too it's got a cool gold hilt pommel and cross guard all of that looking very cool and a nice long blade but not too girthy it looks like someone could actually use this so it's a pretty cool sword as far as attributes required to use this one it's going to be 16 strength and 10 dexterity as for attribute scaling it's going to primarily scale with strength the c rating and then also uh dexterity with a d rating as far as attack power on this one goes it's 717 uh, and it can be upgraded using ashes of ore and it has the stamp upward cut special attack so you can upgrade this to do whatever type of ashes where you like but it starts with the upward cut one so so if you do the stamp and then immediately do a heavy attack out of it you do a big powerful upward attack which is uh pretty strong so definitely not too bad of a special attack for a stock one uh as far as how to get this one goes you can get it right away early in the game it's not even going to be grindy you're right here in Limgrave over by Gatefront Runes. It's going to be in the back of this hearse. So open up the chest and just pick it up. And that's how you get the Lord Sworn's Greatsword. So pretty simple. Doesn't require any grinding. Uh, that's the only place I've ever found it in the game. I don't know if any enemies would drop it randomly. So you might only be able to get one per playthrough unless you're going to get someone to uh, drop it for you. So that is number 10, the Lord Sworn's Greatsword. Let's move on to number 9. All right, so taking the number 9 spot, we have the Gargoyle's Greatsword, which uh, is going to look pretty standard for a FromSoft type of great sword so this one is uh, just a big old fat bar of iron it's got a bunch of wax on the top of it so that would make it significantly less effective as a sword but considering it's too wide to be a sword anyway it wouldn't affect its effectiveness as a club other than all of those little things aside not too bad of a weapon actually looks quite a bit like something you might see in skyrim too now that i think about it as far as attributes required to use this one 18 for strength 10 for dexterity uh attribute scaling is e for dexterity and it does have a b rating for strength so that's not too bad it's pretty good for uh the strength scaling as far as our attack power on the gargoyle great sword we have 724 so just a little bit higher than the lord sworn's great sword this one has the ability to be upgraded with ashes of war and it also starts off with the vacuum slice special attack and so the description vacuum slice is lost skill of ancient heroes hold the armament aloft to surround it with a she uh, shearing vacuum uh, then launch it forwards as a blade-like projectile so uh it's not bad. It, uh, as far as stock ones that start off with great swords, it's one of the probably more effective ones. But uh, since you're probably just going to upgrade it using Ashes of War, that probably doesn't matter that much anyway. As far as how to get this one, it is the reward for a boss fight. So I'm down here in the Siofra River area, way back at the end by the Siofra Aqueduct. Once you get back here, you can fight the uh, Valiant Gargoyle duo here because there's going to be two of them. And once you've defeated both of them, they will drop this sword. So that is how you get it. And as far as I know, it's the only way to get the sword. So that is number nine, the Gargoyle's Greatsword. Let's move on to number eight. All right, so next up at number eight, we have the Knight's Greatsword, which you can see I'm using here. It's uh, actually another one that I kind of like. It's got a weird diamond cross section where it's got a, instead of a fuller, I don't know what you'd call that, probably some sort of a brace running up alongside it. So based on the fact that it doesn't appear to bevel much at all, it would be primarily a thrusting weapon if you used it in real life. But as far as game looking weapons go, this one is a cool looking one. Uh, for attributes required to use this one, it's 12 dexterity and 16 strength. And for scaling, it's gonna have a D rating for strength and a C rating for dexterity. So this one's going to scale a little bit better with dexterity. As far as attack power goes, this one has 724. So uh, same as the Gargoyles Greatsword, except I just like it a little bit better because of... Uh, I, I guess it would probably mostly come down to appearances because even scaling-wise, maybe the Gargoyles is a little bit better. But they're very similar weapons. Uh, so as far as this one goes, for a the special attack, it's going to be, again, the Stamp Upward Cut. And it can also be upgraded using Ashes of War. So you can kind of make it whatever you want. As far as how to get this one goes, it is a random drop rate uh, from most knights types so godric knights and limgrave cuckoo knights in leerny of the lakes mausoleum knights and lindell knights uh, which you can find all the way through the Altus Plateau, but especially here in the capital. Uh, so basically just find any knight type enemy and just keep killing them until they drop it. So we're over here by the Avenue Balcony and you can see there are three of the knights that wander around here. So it's probably the best place to do it. But there's these two knights off to the side. They both wield it. So both of them have a chance to drop it. So you basically just keep uh, 
killing these bad boys until one of them drops it for you. Unfortunately, it's an annoying grinding process, which I know nobody likes in, uh, in how to find videos, or at least in my experience, people don't seem to like it very much, but uh, that is the only way to get it. I've never found a set location where one of these for sure will drop. In fact, this guy might also drop it once he stops using his bow. Like he might have a chance to drop it, I should say, not that he will drop it. So yeah, you just have to keep uh, killing knights, whether they're Mausoleum Knights, Lindell Knights, uh, Godric Knights, whatever, until one of them drops this one for you. Well, this guy did drop something. Let's see what he dropped. Mm, great arrows. So not what we were looking for. Uh, but unfortunately, that is the only way to get this one. So that's number eight. Let's move on to number seven. All right. And for number seven, we have the forked greatsword. So kind of a goofy looking weapon with a big fork at the end. Uh, I guess you could use this as a slashing weapon if it was well sharpened. I mean, looking at the bevel, I would guess not great. Uh, it would be more of like a, a, a bident. Is that what you would call a two pronged trident? Just mostly a stabbing weapon because otherwise I can't see much of a way other than just hitting someone with it that it would be very effective. As far as attributes, quite to use this one 14 for strength 16 for dexterity attribute scaling of c for dexterity and d for strength this one is the first on this list that has a passive effect and that that is that it causes a blood loss buildup of 55 which is that's a great addition it's what put it higher on this list than quite a few other ones because just the attack power of this one is only 670 so it's significantly lower than a bunch of the rest but you do get that blood loss buildup which i think accounts for quite a bit uh this one starts off with the stamp upward cut special attack but you can upgrade it using ashes of ore so if you want to play into the bleed affinity or whatever you can do that with this weapon so the Forked Greatsword is not going to be everyone's uh, favorite, but it is a pretty dang useful weapon. As far as how to get this one goes, it's dropped by imps that wield this weapon, so you're going to need to find specific imps that actually use this one instead of the Little Forked Sword. And a great place to do that is over here in Leonia of the Lakes. You can see that the uh, Rhodes End Catacombs is the one I've got the mark on. That's because this catacomb actually has these imps in it. So right here near the beginning of it, uh, you can see I'm being chased by a gargoyle. We're right by the Site of Grace. If you go down there, you'll be attacked by one. This guy is wielding it, so he has a chance chance of dropping this weapon. So uh, enemies like that, like I said, you just got to look for the imps that are actually wielding it, and there are a number of them throughout this catacomb. So again, that is the Road's End catacomb in uh, Lyurnia. So that's the best spot for grinding it that I know of. Uh, but if you want to get this weapon, that's the way to do it. So you just find those imps and kill them. But that's number seven. Let's move on to number six. All right, so at number six, we have the Bastard Sword, which uh, is not a Bastard Sword. You can clearly tell that it is a two-handed longsword. Uh, bastard Swords typically are hand and a half, so this one is a misnomer. But it is a cool-looking weapon, and uh, because of how realistic it looks, it's actually one of my favorite uh, greatswords in the game. Because if you look at the blade thickness, it's actually pretty close to a realistic blade. The length isn't terrible. Everything about it proportionally is quite good, so I actually quite like this one, uh, making it one of my favorite, probably in my top three favorite looks looking great swords. Uh, but yeah, pretty cool looking. As far as attributes required to use this one, 16 for strength, 10 for dexterity. Attribute scaling is going to be C for strength and D for dexterity, so this one's going to scale a little bit better with strength. Our attack power on the Bastard Sword is 744, so not bad there. No passive effects, but this one uh, can be upgraded using Ashes of War. So once again, we have the stamp upward cut as the stock one, but you can make it whatever you want. As far as how to get this one goes, as far as I know, there is only one place in the game where you can get it, so it's a one per playthrough unless you get someone to drop one for you. Uh, and it's going to be over here here in the Weeping Peninsula over by the Castle Morn Rampart site of Grace. So there's a nomadic merchant right here that you can talk to and you'll be able to purchase it from him for 3,000 runes. So pretty simple and straightforward process of how to get this one but like I said only one in one per playthrough unless you have a buddy or someone that from the internet that'll drop it to you. So that is the Bastard Sword which comes in at number six. Like I said one of my top three favorite great swords but let's move on to number five. All right and so at number five we've got another one of my top three favorite great swords in the game. The Claymore so you can see another one that is actually pretty realistic. It's pretty thin, so it doesn't look ridiculously oversized. And the other proportions are pretty good because a claymore is usually, at least this style of claymore, the earlier ones, are generally considered to be a great sword type category in real life. So they are pretty big. This proportionally looks about right. So I like this one. Uh, it obviously has very good stats because it's already ranking pretty high on the list, but also it looks very, very good. So for attributes, we're to use this one. 13 dexterity, 16 strength. For scaling, we have a D rating in dexterity and a C rating in strength. Our attack power for the claymore is 745, so a little bit higher than the bastard sword. Not a ton, but a little bit. Uh, this one has the lion's claw special attack, so that's fun. It's uh, quite a bit more unique than a lot of the great swords uh, that start off with on this list, but you can also upgrade it with ashes of war, so you can make it whatever you want. The lion's claw special attack is described as the skill of the red mains who fought alongside the general Radan. Somersault forward, striking foes with armament. So it's pretty fun looking. Uh, it just does this leap and a big swinging chop 
chop attack, which I quite enjoy. Uh, obviously, it's quite a bit more powerful than a lot of the ones that great swords are going to start with, and will automatically make the uh, claymore a lot of people's favorite. So as far as how to get this weapon goes, it's going to be down here in Castle Morn. So we're in the Weeping Peninsula again. You have to make your way all the way up through here, take the Castle Morn lift up, and then once you're into here, it's actually pretty close. So you just come around through this courtyard. There's going to be a bunch of enemies here that I've already killed, but they're uh, just misbegotten, so they're not ridiculously hard to take care of. Or you could just run past them if you're quick enough. But you're going to want to keep to the right and come up through here. You're going to come through here and you're going to go into this room up here and right around the corner here is a chest and inside this chest you will find the claymore. So it's a pretty straightforward, simple process, not hard to do. You can see we're right here on the map. Uh, this is an early game one that you can get access to. It's a lot of people's favorite greatsword. Like I said, it's easily in my top three. Uh, but on this list, it takes the number five spot. So let's move on to number four. All right, and so at number four, we have the Banished Knight's Greatsword, which you can see we've got here. This one's not ridiculous, but it is, again, starting to get a little bit thicker. The bevels aren't quite as realistic, but it is pretty cool looking. I do really like the way this one looks. I think it's not bad, but that makes sense because I like most of the Banished Knight stuff. Uh, as far as attributes required to use this one, 9 for Dexterity, 17 for Strength. Attribute Scaling is going to be C for Strength and D for Dexterity. Our attack power on the Banished Knight's Greatsword is 749, so another little step above the Claymore. Uh, this one starts off with the Stamp, Upward Cut, so pretty standard there, and can be upgraded using Ashes of War. As far as how to get this one goes, there's no set location, but it can be dropped by any uh, Banished Knights that are wielding it. And so, like most Banished Knight things, my favorite place to grind it out is going to be over here at the Cathedral of Dragon Communion in Kaled. But if you don't want to do it here, there are a number of decent spots in the uh, Stormvale Castle. The reason I like doing it here is just because there's one that wields this weapon right next to the Sight of Grace. So you just spawn in and find him. He should be wandering somewhere around here, usually right around this corner of the thing. Where is he? Oh, he was over here. He's outside the building. So uh, typically when you spawn in there, he'll be like right next to you. So you can just spawn in and kill him right there in the church. As you can see, he's wielding it. And so he has a chance to drop it. He also has a chance to drop all of the uh, Banished Knight armor and the Banished Knight shield, so it's a great place to go. You just keep going in. There's another one you can see over there. Sta Oops, I accidentally went into the uh, stance. Uh, standing over there on the cliff. So there are actually two of them right here, real close to a side of grace with no other enemies around. So if you're going to do it, if you're going to grind out for this sword, I do recommend the Cathedral of Dragon Communion here in Caelid. But that is number four, the Banished Knight's Great Sword. Let's move on to number three. So at number three, we've got the last of my top three favorite uh, great swords in the game, the Flamberge. And now I love this one for a lot of reasons, one of which being it's actually very similar to a real life historical example that we've got that uh, looks almost exactly like this. So they hit it right on the head with realism. And two being, just proportionally speaking, again, it hits all the check marks. It's about the right length. All the proportions are about right. It's about the right thickness. And it just looks really, really nice. So like I said, my top three favorite great swords are the Flamberge, the Claymore, and the Bastard Sword in that order. Order. So yes, this is the Flamberge, which also takes the number three spot on this list. As for the attributes required to use this one, 14 for Dexterity, 15 for Strength. For attribute scaling, a D rating for Strength, but a B rating for Dexterity. So it's one of the best scaling ones uh, for Dexterity out of the Great Swords. So definitely something I enjoy. Uh, passive effect, this one also has a Blood Loss buildup. So we get 55 points of Blood Loss buildup on this one. As for the attack power on the Flamberge, it's 701. So it's lower than quite a few of the other ones, but again, we've got that Blood Loss, which I think more than makes up the the difference. Uh, this one has the stamp upward cut special attack stock, but you can upgrade it using Ashes of War. So once again, a great way to go with this one is to put a big old powerful blood affinity with like the blood slash or something like that that on this one, and you've got a really powerful bleeding long uh, greatsword. So like I said, Flamberge, definitely, it's probably my all-around favorite great sword in the game, but definitely one of the best overall. As far as how to get this one goes, it is in a static location, so you gotta be down here in Red Main Castle over in Kaelid, so you just make your way down into here, and you can see where I've got the mar marker on the map. It's gonna be up here on the rampart. So it's gonna be guarded by a pumpkin head enemy, but shouldn't be too terribly difficult to take out. So I'll just kind of show you the path to get there from the chamber, uh, chamber outside the plaza. So here you can see our pumpkin head. They don't have that much HP, but they can uh, they can wallop you. But so once you've defeated him, it'll be on uh, one of these corpses here. That one. So this one leaning right against the ledge. I couldn't remember if it was this corpse or that one over there, but it is clearly this one. So that's all you got to do to do it. So like I said, we're over here in Red Main Castle. We're up on this little spot. It's uh, pretty easy to get to, and once you've defeated the pumpkin head, you can pick up one of the best great swords in the game. That just so happens to be my personal favorite. So that's the Flamberge, number three. Let's move on to number two. 
All right, and at the number two spot, we have the Iron Greatsword, which you can see we've got wielded here. Uh, pretty standard looking design, just a big old bulky greatsword. Uh, for attributes, go ahead to use this one. 18 strength, 10 dexterity. Scaling is B for strength, so a nice uh, a one that scales really good with strength for the greatswords. And E for dexterity. Uh, attack power on this one is uh, 70, 775, so pretty dang high. Uh, this one has the ability to be upgraded using Ashes of Ore, and it has the stamp upward thrust, or upward cut special attack. There are three spots where you can hypothetically get this because it's a random drop from misbegotten type enemies that wield this sword. This one here in McKellas Halig Tree, north of the Halig Tree Town Plaza site of grace. So the best way to get uh, to this one is just spawn at Halig Tree Town and you can just run down some steps over there, climb up this long ladder and then you can see the enemy is standing right there. So then you just run over and you kill him as many times as it takes until he drops this sword. It can be kind of an annoying boss fight because we are in a very very late game region. And so obviously they're, not only do they deal tons and tons of damage, but they are damage sponges considering they're, you know, not a boss. Oh, we knocked him off too. Well, don't do that if you want to try grabbing whatever he's going to drop. But uh, yeah, so that's probably the best chance that you have to do it. So like I said, the Sight of Grace is right down there. You run down the stairs, climb up the ladder. There's some enemies in your way, but they're, they're not high level enemies. And then you just jump across and you can kill him there. Uh, the first time I'd uh, do it, it took me, I think, five or six times before he dropped it. So it wasn't ridiculous. But again, with any random drop weapon, the higher your arcane skill is, the more likely they are to drop it. So that's uh, number two, the Iron Greatsword. Let's move on to number one. All right. And so at number one, for our best quality greatsword, we have the Sword of Milos, which uh, a lot of people may not like on this list, but it does fit all of the criteria to actually work really well with a quality greatsword build. So as far as appearances go, uh, I don't love it. It's terrible looking. I hate the way this looks, but it is pokey, I guess. So it's uh, kind of like a spiny club. As far as attributes required to use this one, 15 strength, 19 dexterity. And for scaling, it's going to have a C rating in both uh, strength and dexterity. So that's going to be pretty dang good for any quality type builds because that way you can pull equally off strength and dexterity. It does have a passive effect and that is that it causes 55 points of blood loss buildup. And on top of that, it also has an attack power of 822. So it's got by far the highest attack power of any of these weapons and also has blood loss buildup. So it's pretty obviously great. It cannot be upgraded using Ashes of War, but it does have the Shriek of Milos uh, special attack, which some people might find uh, to be adequate instead of being able to upgrade with Ashes of War. The description of the special attack is lets out a horrific, uh, horrific cursed scream that reduces all damage negation and status resistance for nearby foes. While active, strong attacks will charge to a combo attack. So it's a pretty powerful attack. A, it's going to reduce the... Uh, damage negation for enemies around you and then you can do these charged combo attacks with the strength attack with it which are pretty dang powerful so uh, like I said definitely a decent special attack and I think more than makes up for the fact that you can't uh, upgrade it using Ashes of War. So as far as how to get this weapon goes, there are a couple different points in the game at which you can get it. It's uh, dropped by killing the Dung Eater in the subterranean Shining Grounds if you choose to kill him here. So that's in my opinion probably the easiest and most straightforward way to do it. Uh, or if you release him from his cage you can then fight him in the capital outskirts moat which will be right over here. You'll get to down here and he'll invade you and you can uh, fight him here and if you defeat his corporeal body down here and then go to the round table hold and read a message you can then get it so there's two different ways you can get it uh but the important thing to remember is if you complete his quest line if you complete the dung eater quest line you will not get the sword so you do have to kill him to get this weapon so as far as the easiest way to get it like i said it's going to be just killing his killing him down here in the subterranean uh shunning grounds so as far as the easiest way to get this one starting here from the uh underground roadside side of grace you're just gonna have to zip to it there's a number of enemies out here but you can just avoid them. You do not need to kill them. In fact, they, for some reason, don't seem to be attacking me, which is interesting. Normally, oh yeah, maybe, yeah, he was definitely going to attack me. But it doesn't matter, because you just dropped on this grate, and then you just run past these rats, run past a uh, big old poison flower. I mean, you could stop to kill all these enemies if you want. It wouldn't hurt. They're not too terribly difficult to take out. But, you know, not much of a reason to if you don't have to. And then run around up through here. And there will be a locked gate here. Uh, so, obviously, you, need, you will need to have uh, talked to the Dung Eater in Round Table Hold, where he will give you the key to unlock this gate. And once you do, you can open it. And instead of doing anything, talking to him or whatever, you can just straight up attack him and kill him. So, he'll be standing right inside here against this wall. You kill him, and he will drop this sword. So, that is... Well, and his armor. So, actually, you can get the... The Dung Eater armor, which is some of the best armor in the game, at least as far as heavy armor goes. And the Sword of Milos, which is not only one of the best weapons overall in the game, but the best quality greatsword in the game. So that is number one. That's all ten of them, and where to find them. Hopefully you found this video to be useful. If you have any other requests, like you want to see 
uh, different quality weapons for different classes, let me know and I will make those videos. But that's all for today, so we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you liked this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.